uh, just want to do a quick video update um, got pretty good sunlight today still kind of early so we're not at peak power but right now this one array was hovering around six well, 678 it was like 650 earlier last time I checked but pretty good power but I just want to talk about the new inverter just just a little backup temporary system I'm waiting for the Outback to be uh, Outback inverter to be installed but this is hardware prediction 4000 watt you got it connected into this load center now um, I guess I could turn that on what I did, hardwired it so the neutral goes here up into this neutral bus bar. So this entire leg here will be all neutral bars. The red is tying this end to that end. So basically, all of this is all the lots. Basically, this would be all the lots. So what I did, just to test to make sure my cables are right. I uh, for one of the tests added an outlet, got Romex, so the hot, neutral, hot goes into this breaker, the neutral ties into the neutral bus bar, so very straightforward. Got the grounding, uh, also the ground lug, grounding wire, so got hot, neutral, ground, this is hard work, hard uh, wire connection. Batteries are at 13. Oh, that's kind of weird. 13 volts. Uh, right now, this is just 12 volt. The Outback converter that I'm buying is a 36 volt, I believe. So, I'm going to switch these batteries over from 12 to 36. I have, um, I'm probably going to get, get maybe another six more of these batteries. We'll see trying to negotiate on the price right now but yeah so back to what I was saying that um, ground it's tied into the ground bus bar and uh, let's see what else just like the Romex has a neutral hot and ground so you make sure you ground um, this outlet needs to be grounded basically and the grounding rod have it up going up here this Outback uh, charge controller, I haven't yet, haven't yet installed uh, or wired in because I have these seven solar panels. These are 225 watt panels that I have yet to install. These are new. These are the, um, these are going to go on the true south facing roof, so it should get a whole lot of power out of these. So this Outback will charge these batteries now i have grid tie i have a, I have a uh, thousand watts of, of solar on this grid tie thousand watts of solar on this grid tie so far as this one's doing 660 watts and these two grid tie inverters these are cheap but they work i'm gonna either get a sunny boy or maybe an Outback grid tire inverter to replace these. These are not as efficient as they're, you know, obviously, you know, uh, you get what you pay for, but I've got these have gotten up to like 980 watts at one point. So, so far, they're hovering. This is 661, and this one is 673. So, that was 673. And I have another one of these inverters outside. These can be placed outside also, as long as they're not, you know, you don't want to get them wet and get rain, but I have another thousand watts of solar panels in the uh, mounted ground mount outside. So, so far, one, two, and the one outside at 3,000 watts. And of course, uh, these seven, that I'll be adding these are you know 225 watt panels. I think it's seven, right? One, two, six, seven, seven of these, and those will be tied into this uh, 
Outback charge controller, which are also charge these batteries. Now I have a little tester going on. I have uh, on this side, my other Outback charge controller. I got just a uh, 80 watt solar panel connected to it. Just I just want to see, you know, just make sure this works, make sure I'm, my wiring is right. I know what the heck I'm doing, but uh, that's pretty good. It, um, it keeps the battery, you know, it's like a trickle charge. It keeps the battery, I want the batteries to be fully charged until I can, uh, you know, finally finish this solar project, which I probably never will. I got this Outback Mate that I haven't yet I installed, but uh, I'm going to move it. I'm not sure where I'm going to put it yet. So, but yeah, this is working well um, for this setup. So, what I'm going to do, I'm getting a disconnect switch similar to this one. This is the uh, battery disconnect switch. So let's see, let me turn it off. Turn it off. And basically that disconnects the battery to this. This is only 32 volts. I believe it's only 32 volts DC. Yeah, 32 volts DC. I'm getting a, another one. It's the, the heavy duty one, which is uh, 48 volts DC. See the panels, the solar panels are probably producing 37 volts DC on this one and 37 on this one. So I cannot add this disconnect. So what I'm gonna do, put a disconnect here and So one would be grid tie, two would be to this charge controller, and one and two, if you want to do one and two, that basically that what that's going to do is send power to the grid tie inverter and to the charge controller. So we're going to need to get two of these to make that happen. But, um, I'm not sure what else I'm going to tell you. Just to turn this back on. Um, didn't have another green wire. Saw the green wire. I got a solid red wire for the ground. I need to change that, of course. But I got a fan there because these do get hot. Um, not that hot today, but the fans are on. I guess I could turn it up. And I'll just put another fan right here for this one but yeah it's uh so far it's working out well this is uh so this charge controller comes down to a uh, breaker or a fuse into this uh, disconnect so if, if i wanted to i can just disconnect pull that disconnect and that will disconnect the power that this is generating going to the batteries. So I have a lot of fan I have been working last night. Huh, anyway. <laughs> and this is the disconnect from that little 80 watt solar panel. So I just got it temporarily lines here, the positive negative going into the disconnect. And from the disconnect, positive and negative going into the uh, charge controller. Not bad for 80 watt panel. I mean, it's getting pulling in 40 watts, but at least it's trickle charging these batteries um, just to keep them topped off. I don't really use them yet much. And this inverter, which is temporary, just. Uh, as a backup, just make sure, I, in theory, I know what the heck I'm doing. I've, I've actually um, tested this um, outlet, put a 1600 watt, my wife's 1600 watt uh, hair dryer up to it, and a 1000 watt space heater. Ran them both on high, the highest uh, rating, temperature, whatever. 
speed and no problem this thing handled it fine I was actually shocked I didn't expect that breaker didn't trip or anything so they're pretty good I am looking forward to getting this thing wired in I gotta mount these suckers and then call it a day take care